Hello everyone. Let's create this DNA model in geometry nodes of Blender. So I'll open a geometry nodes editor window and add a new geometry nodes modifier to the object. Let's start with the helix and the equation of the helix is x equal to a cos t, y equal to a sin t and z equal to bt. We can get rid of this t and make x and y directly dependent on z. So our simplified equations will be x equal to a cos z, y equal to a sin z and z will remain unchanged. We'll start with a curve line whose points we will be shifting to get our helical curve. We are using curve line instead of mesh line because when we convert this into mesh, we can add a profile to it to give it some thickness. Currently this has only two points so let's add a resample curve node which will give us the ability to add more points to the curve. And if I connect the output of this to the geometry, we have a single line going along the Z axis. Now let's create our XYZ values. We'll start with the position node and we'll separate the XYZ values. Eventually we will be combining this into a single position vector. So let's add a combine XYZ node. The Z value will remain unchanged. And before we calculate X and Y based on this Z, let's get a few things cleared out. So basically this is the line whose points we want to shift to get a curve like this in 3D. This is a helical curve and it will have a wavelength. Wavelength is basically the length after which the curve repeats itself. So this is actually the wavelength. And there is the height of this line. So this will be the total height of the curve. And this height will contain number of cycles. So there is another entity called cycles. Like this one has two cycles here. The wavelength is actually related to height and cycles. Like if we divide height by cycles, we get the wavelength. So let's add these nodes also here. We'll have one value node for height, one for cycles. And if we divide height with cycles, we get the wavelength. There is also another entity that we need to take into account. Currently we are showing this curve as starting at value zero, but it can start at any other value also, which will be very useful for us. Like for example, this. So this is actually the phase shift. So instead of starting at this, point we are starting the curve a little early and the length by which we are shifting the curve this is actually the phase shift the curve repeats itself after two pi radians so we need to map this two pi onto the wavelength and we will be adding the phase shift on top of that so that we can start the curve at any point we'll first multiply z with two pi and divide it with wavelength. And finally, we will add the phase shift to this value to arrive at a normalized Z. This will be the Z value based on which we will be calculating X and Y. The thing is this phase shift is currently in radians, but it's easier to think of angles in degrees. So let's convert this value into radians and then feed it to this node. So we can have this phase shift in degrees. And this will be our height. So we can combine this into combine X, Y, Z and feed it to the curve line endpoint as the height. Then we also need this count value to change based on the height. So if the height increases, the number of points should also increase. Otherwise, the curve will not be very smooth. So let's introduce another entity called resolution. And we will multiply height with resolution to arrive at the count of points. 
we can now calculate x and y based on this normalized z so as we saw x is cos of z multiplied by amplitude and we can duplicate these nodes and just change this cosine to sine and it will give us the y value and now if we set the position of the points along the line to this new position we should get the helical curve let's also set the default values for all these entities we start with height of 1 resolution of 50 and one cycle let's have zero phase shift to start with and now if we connect this to the position we'll have a helical curve let's make amplitude also 1 so you can see the x value is starting at 1 and y is 0 that's because at z equal to 0 the cosine of 0 is 1 and the sine of 0 is 0 so now if I change this phase shift to 90 the y will be 1 and x will be 0 because cosine of 90 is 0 and sine of 90 is 1 and if I change this to 180 the curve will start at the opposite end this is very useful in case of creating the two strands of helix which are out of phase with 180 degrees from each other mm -hmm. so let's create a node group out of this and call it helix and instead of getting these values as individual inputs we can connect them to group input so that we, we can control these values from outside Now the next thing we want to do is create a duplicate of this so we have two strands and we can join the two with join geometry node we can make this 180 degrees out of phase with the earlier one so these two strands are going parallel now maybe we can decrease the amplitude or let's have a single node to control the amplitude and the cycles so if we decrease the amplitude the amplitude of both the curves will change the next thing we want to do is create the connectors between these two strands basically there will be lines going from one strand to the other parallel lines like this for that we will first add an instance on points node and get the points from one of the helical curves and the instance will simply be curve line so we get a set of lines that are starting from one of the curves we want to have the control of this interval of lines currently there are too many of them so we can basically control that by using this selection socket let's add an index node which will identify each of the points and then we can take the modulo of this with a value which is our interval and check if it is equal to zero to adjust the interval between these connector lines so we can add a value node here and call it connector interval instead of value let's add an integer node because this will be an integer value and if we now increase this the interval between the lines will increase now we need to find out the position of the corresponding points on the other curve for that we will use the sample index node sample index node basically allows us to sample any value along the index of the incoming geometry so our incoming geometry is the, the other strand so the value is basically the position here we should get the position of all the points along this this other strand 
and since that position is a vector we will change this to a vector and as we are getting these lines at a particular interval we also need to have similar interval for the input index of this strand also so basically we need to multiply this index with the interval value to get at the position and since we want to change the position of only the other point because the first point is correctly located we just need to shift this point onto this curve so we need to first of all realize these instances and we can actually reference individual points of the lines we can separate out the two end points of sing individual connector let's add a realize instance so at this point if we take the index we will get index of both the ends of every line every connector line and since we want to shift only the second point of the line we can take the modulo of the index so let's add the index and let's have modulo operator with value as 2 so this will select every alternate point and so the first point will not be selected but the second one will be selected since the float modulo will be 1 in this case the selection will be true So we need to have a set position, and for this set position, the selection will be this modulo value, and the position will come from this. Now we see that only the first half of the points of the strand are connected. That's because after realizing the instance, for every connector we have two indices here, whereas here we have only one. To compensate for that, we need to divide this. by 2 before feeding it to the index now we you see that we have the correct connectors and if we change the interval you will observe that at some points we have this vertical line that's because for this particular index there is no corresponding index on the other one and the reason for that is that we are starting with index 0 so we need to subtract 1 from this index before doing the multiplication and now we have the correct set of connectors and we also have control over many factors like we can change the interval we can change the overall height of the strands we can change the cycles and we can also change the amplitude so an interesting fact about this is that since we have calculated the wavelength dynamically if we make this cycles zero this will give the curves an appearance of twisting so if we set the cycles value to zero we get straight lines and by increasing it we can give the appearance of twisting to the strands which is a very useful animation now all that needs to be done is basically add some thickness to the strands even before that maybe we can add spheres at the end of the connectors representing the molecules so to add the molecules at this point we will have an instance on points node connected to join geometry and as instance we can have uv spheres with small radius and that will give us the molecules at the end of the connectors let's also shade this smooth we can now convert the curves into meshes and give them some thickness i'll combine the strands into a single geometry so let's have join geometry for the two strands and then we can convert these to mesh and again for profile we will use a curved circle with some small radius similarly for the connectors we will have a curve to mesh finally let's add some material so we'll have a separate material for molecules then a material for the connectors and a material for the helical strands and let's get all these inputs from the group input 
and just assign simple shaders with different colors to these. So that's it about this tutorial. If you have any suggestions or questions, leave a comment on this video. Thank you very much.